Welcome to A Musical Life. I'm Hugh Sung, and uh, I have with me Aurelia Azulez. Am, am I pronouncing your last name correctly? Yes, I have a second last name, though. Oh, what is your second? Oh, we have a new second last name. <laughs> yes, pretty what recent, so it's as Aurelia Azulez Guetta. That's okay. my full, full name. And what is the reason for this new last name? I, I got married. Oh, congratulations. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so before we dive in, a little bit of history. Um, it really starts, if you don't mind, it starts with me because I was one of the first professional musicians to go completely paperless. This is back in 2001. Nobody was doing this. And I came up with a system for using, back then, there were no tablets, there was no Kindle, no iPad, but Microsoft came up with a computer called the Tablet PC. And believe it or not, for the first time, you could take a computer screen and turn it into a portrait mode so you could see a full sheet of music instead of just half a sheet like you would on a laptop. For me, that was revolutionary. And so as a result of that, I actually um, then started exploring ways of turning pages with foot switches. And that's what led me to co-found a company called AirTurn. And we sold page turning pedals around the world and what was interesting is when the iPad came on the scene, before then, sales were, were pretty meager. But when the iPad came on the scene, that was a game changer. Suddenly, um, it made sense to start thinking about reading sheet music on a device rather than on a book. And, you know, people thought we were crazy in the beginning, but now, of course, everybody is doing this. Of course, with the new, whole new field of digital sheet music, one of my jobs was to reach out to developers to try to see if we could get them to collaborate with us. One really weird thing I th that I think was a blessing in disguise, Apple's uh, iPad iOS system was trying to block everybody. They did not want any other manufacturers to work within their operating system. They want to control everything. Steve Jobs, I think, hated us. He knew of us. He didn't like us because we broke into his iPad and we figured out how to get our, we were the first, well, I actually believe Lee and I, we were one of the first Bluetooth external devices that could control an iPad. <laughs> so we figured out how, but we had to have a special code. So that meant I had to reach out to all these other app developers, nascent app developers, to try to get them to use our code so that our air turn would be compatible with uh, other things. Now, one of, the th one of the interesting problems that I was finding was that um, the apps were okay, they weren't great, uh, and they were all limited in one fashion or another. Um, when I was using my old tablet PC, I was using PDF readers, and there were things that I started using that I really, really missed. Certain apps would do some things well, other apps would do other things well, but no app really got it 100% the way I wished it, they could, okay? Now, skip forward to a few years ago. I guess, um, Aurelia, we started talking what, four years ago, right? Four or five, when four, we just launched the, the company. Okay, yeah. and so you came to me, you reached out to me, um, and by that time I had already you know, started using uh, certain apps for reading sheet music. Again, it was pretty good, but not perfect. And you came to me, and you were launching this new app. Can you give us the name of your app? Music. Music, spelled with an N, as in new, <laughs> brand new, music. Nope. Okay. And so you came, came to me and said, you have this brand new sheet music reading app. Well, by this time, I had already, you know, talked to uh, dozens blah, blah, and dozens. Blah, blah, blah. A <laughs> lot, yeah, a lot of, a lot of developers. And most of these developers were single programmers, guys working by themselves in their basements, you know. <laughs> and very talented, very smart. And you came, and uh, we, we talked through your app a little bit. And... I liked some of the things I was seeing, but it was very early. It was a very early stage app. And I think what was interesting is that I, as I shared with any app developer, I was sharing some of the limitations that I was seeing as, as a professional musician, things that I wish you guys would do, okay? Yeah, yeah. And then we dropped off them. We, we both went our separate directions. I think back then you were living in Tel Aviv, right? Exactly, okay. yeah. And uh, now I think you're in... Back to Paris, you're with Paris. all the team. We're all based in France, in Paris. Oh, you're based in Paris. Okay, great. Oh, I'm going to have to come visit. <laughs> now, so skip forward, and I just relaunched my website, and I relaunched my newsletter, and the day after my new newsletter came out, you emailed me and said, hello, do you remember me? <laughs> exactly. 
And I, w- I have to be honest, I was a little surprised because I, I never really took a hard look because I saw the limitations of music four years ago. Mm-hmm. And then you said you wanted to talk about what you're doing. I took a look at the app and oh my goodness, it's like you answered all my, my you checked off all my wish lists and things in terms of things, at least most of them, okay? <laughs> and now I've got some new wish list things, but oh my goodness, this is unbelievable. You guys are like Santa Claus. <laughs> it's like a birthday gift. I have to say, I am so excited. Now, you know, I, I don't believe it's ever possibly 100% perfect, you know, music reader, but you guys are doing some really amazing things in digital sheet music. So, Aurelia, I want to turn it over to you and um, tell us a little bit. First of all, tell us how music got started, what inspired you to get started, and what this app can do. And I'm going to share my favorite feature, which is, believe it or not, the one of the main things that nobody's been able to do that you guys are doing. <laughs> this is like, okay. if you had this one feature, it solves so, the, the most basic problem of digital sheet music. Everybody's like, wondering, what is it? What is it? What is this? But I why really don't know. Yeah, I know. So you start with your story first. Tell me how you started okay. music. I said first, okay. So uh, five years ago, we we had a, um, a couple of friends from scout movements and we we're playing some music. So we're all musicians. The founding team is, is uh, our singers, pa- pianist players and, and guitar players and drum players. And we gathered to organize a, a concert. And at that time, it was an open um, a concert, open doors, and we really struggled with paper. So we, we really felt this pain uh, while we were performing outside with like just papers and sheet music. <laughs> so we decided to conceive a solution that will be the perfect tool for performing musicians. And that's how we all, we just started like five years ago and we launched the app at the NAM show in 2016. Mm-hmm. That was the very first time we launched the, the app. Now, the and NAM received- show is the National Association of Music Merchants, the, the one of the world's largest music business conventions in Anaheim, California. So I'm sorry, go ahead. You're a great teacher. (laughs) So we were there for the very first time. It was a candy shop for us, just instruments all around the places. And we were so uh, excited by launching this app at this specific date. We received the award of the SBO. So if you can also explain the school and band orchestra award, because yes, we received it in 2016 because they they automatically they naturally saw the the potential of the app because the app is cloud based we run our own server so everything is collaborative in the app so it's the main structural differences one of the main structural differences with the, the other apps on the app store I see, and uh, I see. you have so many possibilities because you can connect the screens all together you can share markings in real time so we got um, we got spotted and then we launched the app on the App Store. We have thousands of, of users. And in parallel, my main role was to to tell myself, okay, individual musicians, as you said at the very beginning, now iPads, uh, it's the 10 years anniversary of yes. the iPads. It's quite common to see musicians with iPads or iPhones. But what about large groups, large ensembles, schools, symphonic orchestras, opera houses, where Technology is not there yet in terms of sheet music reading. I, I, I mean, I mean this. So we started four years ago making some um, experimentations with the orchestras that wanted to really move forward and move digital. And uh, since then, we have so many institutions that are um, transiting to digital. So it's not black and white. They still have paper in the orchestras, but. They are implementing the tools for the music librarians or the stage managers or some concert um, string leaders. And it's going very, it's it's a smooth transition, but a a very step-by-step transition that our company, we have the team, the entire team is dedicated a lot of uh, time and and, and energy on accompanying the large institutions to toward this transition. So we have these two different uh, um, uh, areas in our uh, company. We have the product, the app, developers. Where we have five developers full-time in-house, uh, all the time releasing new features. And we have 
uh, a team that is really providing human services to just uh, as consultants, as trainers, to just accompany uh, orchestras and opera houses in, in the transition. You know, it's interesting that you're finding some success reaching out to these orchestras because believe it or not, this the, other folks have been trying to get orchestras to adopt this technology. The problems back then were that, you know, the early tablet PCs were very expensive. One tablet PC back then cost $2,000. I mean, this is you know, early 2000, $2,000 mm -hmm. per person. That, and the technology was, was not, was very primitive. It didn't work very well. And the dream of sharing markings was not practical. They, they, it was theoretically possible, but nobody yeah. really developed an easy way to do it. And it sounds like you guys have cracked the code. But also the culture, the culture was not ready. Musicians yeah. are very, <laughs> this is from my air turn experience, musicians are very, very nervous about technology. And it takes a long time because I think my theory is musicians train for safety. We want to perform. We don't want to make mistakes. That's why we overtrain. But then that also makes us very cautious about mm -hmm. any little thing that might make us mess up, right? And mm -hmm. something new like a digital sheet music, you know, app. What ha everybody has the same problem, same questions as to what might go wrong. So, but now I think the culture is changing. So to your advantage. So yes. I'm so excited to hear that. Yes, there is also groups. a third uh, point: uh, music publishers, because if yes. they don't. Yes. Move digital, you cannot just, uh, when you are a, a professional orchestra and you have an agent that controls your original uh, paper files on, on, the, on the music stands, you really have to find a solution where all the, all the, um, the chain is, is completed and is uh, protected. So we spent three years uh, negotiating with music publishers and now we released a music publishing portal for them to send protected PDF files for rental and for purchase. So this is used by music festivals like the Lucerne Festival in Switzerland or in for the Boston Symphony Orchestra, the Tanglewood Festival. They use the system to just receive PDF files, but all with the rental restrictions, with the, all the parts, with media files. So it's a, it's a, new, a, new, um, a new era for music publishers as well. No. When the rental is done, does that mean the PDF disappears? No, I'll show you. Um, <laughs> it, it means that you have a watermark. I, I wouldn't. Um, ah. Yes, so I'll just open one of uh, an example music resources. I have one piece here, for instance. It has been uh, provided ah, by. Ah, look at that. Very smart. Yes, so Very it smart. means that when you expire, when there is the expiration date, you have the watermark. If you want to renew it and you have markings, you will just have the watermark uh, disappearing. You, you will see this disappearing and you keep your markings. That's a very important point. So you don't need all the time to rewrite your markings, erase them, send them back to the publisher. So this is something very, very uh, useful. It saves time. So you feel the necessity to implement this because it's not just a fancy tool. You put iPads on stage and then you, you're shining on the stage. It's really to, to save time. And it's uh, music librarians and, and uh, artistic directors, they, they love using this because they receive in one, one click, they receive the file and they, they cannot export it because it's locked in the system. Ah, okay. So everything is a thought to uh, please both the music publishers and the orchestras. So you can understand that sometimes it's, yeah. it's uh, complicated, but we really designed it to be a, a win-win situation for both of them. All right, uh -oh. let's let's dive into the app itself. I'm, I'm running go. a version of music myself. I'm going to share my favorite feature, but you go ahead and show me show show us all what makes music amazing. <laughs> okay, so music is um, a cloud-based app. So first thing about music is um, a powerful organizer of all your sheet music, and not just music um, files like PDF. You can import in, in the system from any drive or take pictures of your paper uh, music. You import everything. If I may interrupt, just for some musicians who don't understand what cloud computing is, I think one of the in the early days of digital sheet music, I had I was a little scary because I had all my music scanned and copied into one computer. 
my biggest fear was that if that computer died, or if I lost it, or if I broke, dropped it on stage, and I've had computers fall on stage, and I, you know, worry about the screen cracking, you could lose all your music. And I had mm -hmm. thousands and thousands of scores. With the cloud, your app automatically makes a copy of all the music and keeps it on drivers, you know, just like we think of Netflix or we, we think of streaming TV now is common. Those are all coming from servers in the cloud. Exactly. These are often, you know, so your music is safe. It's always backed up. So even if yeah. you lose your iPad or break it, you can always retrieve your music through your system. Yeah, it's, it's, um, it's very secure in that way. So you can see the cloud at the bottom uh, right oh, of the that, screen yeah. of the iPad. This means that it's all synchronized because I had some connection with Wi-Fi. But the other purpose of the of the cloud-based uh, app is that I keep all of my music on my um, iPhone as well. I can oh, wow. run multi-device, so I can have my iPad, and if I'm on the train and I need to to see something on the music, and I don't want to take my iPad, I just it's synchronized between the, your devices as well. So as long so, as you have an account with music, no matter exactly. what device you're coming in on, you can access your music how cool is that yeah, yeah. so here it's your account you can log in log out and use it it's like gmail or any any uh, right. yeah. app that uses the cloud so that's the first strength of the app really the structure we have developers that just develop the ser strengthen the server and it's really something that is different from the the market mm -hmm. then uh, you have a lot of uh, uh, flexibility to organize your music so let's say I've imported all of my pieces here in the library. I have 1,237 uh, pieces. So I can consult everything from my library. I can sort in alphabetical order. I can put some favorites. So it work, it, it, it's like a, a big folder with all of the music that you can easily access. And on the top of that, you can build set lists. So set lists, um, it's... Um, custom lists of pieces. I'll give you an example here. I'll uh, open one set list, uh, Symphony's PDF. I have a lot of PDFs, but I really want to change the order because they are excerpts or not. So I just click on edit, and then I change the order of the set list, okay. and I click on done. So set list is another layer. It's uh, the possibility to sort your pieces either because you need to prepare a concert or you need to prepare a program for your class. So sure, sure. it brings a, be a better organization. And the way it's displayed in music, it's quite uh, important to emphasize, is that it's not, you, you feel more um, freedom because you don't see the music. You have different menus and separate headers and heading menus to really do this before entering into the piece, which is, uh, more powerful in terms of organization. So that's the first part, the organization. Then if you access a piece, I open the piece, Schubert Symphony 8, you can see a lot of markings already. And uh, what's good in music is that inside the piece itself, within the piece, you can combine multiple files. So it can be different parts. It can be uh, the same piece, but multiple editions. Oh, it's, it's, there you yeah, go. Yeah, you, I like you, it. You, within you, one piece, yeah. Yeah, yeah within, within one piece. piece. Yeah. It can be the same piece but at different levels for intermediate, beginners, and advanced. So you can really um, add uh, combined things. So here It's a great organization tool. Yes. Okay. You can uh, have the full score and then you can just jump to the violin. Uh, ah, very clever. Now, let's talk a little bit about the the innovative sharing feature now it's you can combine these for yourself but what's really cool is the fact that a conductor can actually control the page turns for everybody in the orchestra is that correct am i hearing it, that correctly it's correct it's okay. possible with the, the music xml format okay. uh, to control the page turn so here we read we opened a pdf file but as I, As I told you, we read the music XML files, so maybe you so, want to so, make sure. Sure. <laughs> Okay, so PDF files have, have been the, the files that I've been using ever since I got started. And they're a very stable file system that's been around for decades. Adobe Systems created it. Um, and what PDFs are basically like image pictures, uh, photos of pages, okay? 
And uh, so they're, they're, they're just images. It's like taking a scanner or a photocopier and creating a di digital binder of those images as quote unquote pages. And so it's, it's a universal file format. That means almost every, compu every computer in the world practically can read and open and see a PDF file, which is great for moving those same files across different computers. The limitation is that what you see is what you get. You can't change the information per se on a PDF file. I can't change the notes. I can draw markings as a layer on top of that, but it doesn't change the information itself. Now, so your app will open PDF files as most cheap music reader apps do, but now there's a new format. Well, it's been around for, uh, again, also a number yeah, of yeah. years, but um, back then the developers of Finale came up with Music XML as a way to bridge and create a universal language across multiple music notation programs. So uh, Finale, Sibelius, all the major music notation programs have a way to export their music as music XML. So think of it this way. Music XML is very much like a, a Word document as opposed to a photocopy page. With a photocopy page, you can see the paper, but you can't change it. But with a Word document, you could receive that Word document and edit it and change it or make the font bigger, change the font, do all sorts of things because it's a dynamic file. And that file can be shared. Those text files can be opened in different programs and shown slightly different ways. But the base kernel information can be shared really across multiple programs. And Music XML is the musician's uh, language, base language. Now, your program can open both PDFs and Music XML, and that's what makes this really exciting. So, okay, show us what this, what news, music can do with a Music XML file. Right, right. so um, the Music XML is like uh, a more liquid uh, file because the first, um, the first um, example is that here, for instance, if I zoom in, I'll do it like this. Now, if if it's on a PDF, been, uh, yeah, if it's a PDF file, it would just stay that yeah, view, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, but with Music XML, here it's also that. relevant because you can really adjust the size wow. and the, the, the pinch you would like to do. So it's very uh, interesting because if you receive a file and you need to enlarge the music right. and not to crop the right. music, you really need to change the layout, you can do it with the Music XML. That's amazing. Now I, I go to the alto parts. So I again, if I zoom in, and that's I, the biggest complaint with iPads because most people would say, "Oh, this, the screen is too small, right?" I wish yes. I had a bigger iPad. So here now, it doesn't matter how small your screen is. You can actually zoom the music and customize. Look at that! If you want to see just one measure, <laughs> that's amazing! Wow. Okay. All right. Now, so that's the first thing. Now the problem, of course, with Music XML files is that in the with other programs that use that, you can't change. I mean, you can change the view, but you can't mark it, right? Like you do with a PDF. The benefit is I can write down fingerings. I can write down markings. Now up to up to now, you couldn't add ink layers to an XML file. So how did you address that? Mm -hmm. so, so the way our developers, developers conceive um, uh, the, the system is that. First, set your uh, display preferences. So if you want to make a specific uh, pinch, do it. And then when you make markings, so I'll make one example, I'll have one example here, for instance, I do one marking here, I click on done. It would mean that the liquidity, yeah, it, first this is- That's uh, amazing. <laughs> you, it sounds so simple. You couldn't do that before, wow. I know. So yeah, I, I'm now I'm I'm used to this, but it's it's God, really <laughs> for me. It's pew, my my brain is yeah. going wow. <laughs> yeah, that's a very advanced um, uh, development to uh, to enable this. So here I can still benefit from the, all the features uh, of the music XML. For instance, I can still play the the music XML and really have a rolling bar. I can. Uh, Pinching, but then it would take the behavior of the PDF file. So that's the only limitation. Okay. But then I can, uh, for instance, I need to make transposition. I can change the key. So here it's you, not. Oh that my goodness! <laughs> we we develop this in a way yeah. that the trans in transposition mode you can uh, you can still transpose even if you have annotated the file. So it's uh, 
it's it's a uh, huge and that and annotation will stay there it won't disappear no 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 the no. page or anything like that right and if by any if you want to uh, to retrieve the liquidity of the music xml you want to make this marking anymore you just delete the marking you've done and you go back to the first stages of the music xml file but then you would so lose it's your annotation not, so it's a, that's a great yeah. compromise right yeah so just to show you that the, the music XML file is still here, we don't convert into um, a final PDF file, it's really, it's here. So for instance, in this music XML file, as you saw, you can make markings. You can also add um, a track, for instance, I want to see the clarinet uh, part, I activate the clarinet part, and I will see it on my, uh, on my iPad. <laughs> Oh my goodness, Starfleet Command. I think we have our sheet music reader. Look at this, this is amazing. Thank you. <laughs> and, and same for the MIDI. Um, uh, if you need to practice, for instance, your instrument, you just you simply need to mute your, uh, your parts and keep the other open and then you can just practice and make some play alongs. You can play with the metronome and, and accelerate uh, the tempo. Uh, you can have the metronome visible, audible, both. So it's... It's a, it's a complete tool to, um, to rehearse, to practice home. Uh, the, the only thing is that you need to have access to the music XML file. Uh, so our role now um, is to uh, give this feature for people that have PDF files, which is more complex and more challenging because it requires a lot of uh, OMR, optical music recognition. Okay, so, and so what she's talking, talking about, about is the holy the grail. grail. I know. People have been trying to do this for a very long time where you take a PDF, you take the picture of the music and you find a way to recognize. Now, this has been very common in, in with text where you can take a scan of a yeah, book yeah. and now the now computers are smart enough to be able to read the image of the words and translate them into editable text. What you're talking about is doing the same thing for music notation, which is magnitudes much more difficult. But you want to take PDF files and give them the ability to turn into music XML files, which can be liquid display, which can you can hear the playback of them. Really? How far away are we from that? I cannot give you a lot of... Um... <laughs> No, but this, I, I, I love to take this opportunity, that I reckon we are taking now. For instance, people ask us, uh, do we want to be a notation software as well to change and make edits on the note? That is not the direction we're taking now. Okay. So it's really, I, I really want to give like the long-term vision uh, that we have, uh, because uh, we have, as I told you, five developers and they are great, great people. So. Even my family, they ask me, why you have so many developers for one single app? Oh. But because, we're, because we, we have such an ambitious long-term vision of enabling musicians to really have access to the, to the piece itself, to the, to the generated music of, of the piece, uh, we have a lot of development and I, I will be more than happy in the next blah blah to tell you, uh, to, to make the announcement. But it's it's a uh, it's something that will come. Uh, so here, so you have this, and with the music XML, but also with the with PDF, you can have old, uh, video files. So what? I'll just show wait, you wait, one. Wait, wait, you can embed videos with your music? That's crazy. <laughs> yes. So no here is way. a video of uh, of a teacher actually that wanted to um, to really synchronize the exercise uh, for the yeah. students. Yeah. So he took a video of himself. He imported the video into music. He imported the music XML file into music and then he made a manual synchronization. Bonjour, ami guitariste. Now, how, how is, is that done within your app or how is that synchronization done? So you have um, a synchronization feature here where you manually point and, and put your finger on the different bars and different notes. So it's a manual synchronization and then we calculate the average time between two synchronization points. This is done with the music XML file. We also, and this this was yesterday evening, released the synchronization feature for PDF file as well. Oh my goodness! Wow. So it's um, I'll open one uh, PDF, hopefully with um. This is music XML. I have so many music XML files, so I'll just try to find one. So here's a um, question: uh, The teachers create yes. and they distribute that to their students, then, right? 
Sorry? So if a teacher creates this video tutorial, they can then distribute that to their students, right? Yes. Wow. Definitely. It, it, so I'll show it, you. Okay. okay. Is it only through the music? Uh, here's another question. I'm, I'm going to think as a business person. Could a teacher sell this somehow? Is there a marketplace where they can create their own tutorials to sell their courses through music? So today it's not the case. Uh, we hope that it can be open. Really, it's, uh, one of our main goal is to just uh, uh, promote the digital um, use. So it's, uh, we would love to do it in, in the future. Today they share the file. So for instance, let's say I would have done here uh, some edits and some videos. I just send via email. Okay. But the, the, the person, person that would receive the email, it's a music, music file, so it's NZK, NZK format. format. Mm -hmm. So they, they need to have music. Uh, they, they can, can have it from an iPad, iPad and an iPhone. iPhone. But, but also in a, a couple of weeks, weeks from, from a web, web uh, viewer. viewer. So, so it's, it's, it will be also web-based, web -based, wow. meaning wow. that you can read and view the, 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 your library uh, from any device. It can be a tablet, an Android tablet, a computer, anything. So that's, that's, that's that will be very useful, useful because, because you don't need to have an iPad, iPad to share your your your, um, your uh, content. content. You, you simply need to send it via email with members that have a computer and have uh, the music app. Amazing, amazing. Okay. So, okay, now I'm going to go back a, a little bit. First, uh, I've got a couple of wish list things. I want to see if you guys have actually fulfilled my wishes. And so, Let's one go. one of the first. I remember when we were talking many years ago. One of the things I really missed from my old tablet PC days was a, a nice way of seeing bookmarks. You know, um, there are bookmarking features in other apps, but it's it's not it's very clumsy. And I, I want because I wanted to be able to you know work on a passage and bookmark where I need to go back and practice or find different movements quickly. Show me your bookmarking capabilities. Uh, so here I'm opening a very heavy file of um, an opera reduction, a piano reduction of an opera mm -hmm. used, used by stage managers. Ah, that's a, oh, that makes so much sense because there's so many cue points of when exactly. to send this person, when to turn the lights on, blah, 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 blah. A lot of technical instructions. Okay. Exactly. So here you see the list of the bookmarks, which is quite uh, large. <laughs> And, and you can sort, sort the bookmark uh, per color, meaning that if you're a, <laughs> you have multiple uh, persons that are uh, using uh, the same PDF file in a collaborative mode, and maybe we will have the time to discuss this. Each person, for instance, has its own color and can just filter uh, his color and just, okay, I am the black bookmark and I just read my black bookmarks. Or it can be personal, you, you give some, some codes, uh, movement one, movement two, movement, movement three it's in, it's in red, and the other information are in blue. And then you can really sort your bookmark uh, and give a meaning with the colors. So that's pretty useful. Here, for instance, I'm in the page. I click on plus, create. Per default, it takes uh, this page, the active page, as a bookmark. And I will make one bookmark called you in uh, what's your favorite color? Uh, blue. Okay. okay, okay, the light blue, done. So if now I'm in the page, I'll jump to page three, white page, and I want to go to the blue bookmark, so I had all the filters open, I'll search here. There you there go. go. Woohoo! <laughs> So it's easy to use, really, and you can navigate on your file uh, in multiple ways. But bookmark are, are, is a great tool to uh, navigate and structure your 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 file. Yeah. Very very cool. So another thing that I used to do was to use the tablet. P the Windows has this wonderful set of free tools called clipping tools, where I could take the pen and draw a circle on the music. And it would copy just that, whatever shape I drew. It doesn't have to be a square, but it could be any freeform shape. And I would use it to carve out little sections of the music. It would make a little copy of that shape with a copy of the music. And then I could paste it onto a blank page. And I called those PJs, uh, practice journals. But in English, we also call them pajamas. <laughs> <laughs> so I would make these, you know, my own custom PJs, practice journals, of just little weird shapes of clips of music of what I needed to practice. Can you do anything like that? 
So today, the thing we can do is to uh, take this tool, the lesson, and select what we want, and then move it, copy or paste it, okay? Though it doesn't uh, take into account the PDF file itself. It's just the annotations, okay. So this pyjama feature will will arrive. It's planned. It's in our list. Okay, good, 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 good. So it's just a matter of time. All right, uh, wait. Not secret. <laughs> so you can wait. But uh, the way people use um, um, around this uh, this um, this thing is that they just when they annotate, they take the page and then they take the white um, the white um, 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 pen. They just erase here and then they duplicate this page and they, they compile different pages and if they want to cut some elements they just put the white. I see. So they kind of do it in backwards. But it's, yeah, it's not quite as elegant. <laughs> so yeah, it's kind of like it's drawing just, in reverse. It's, it's, but it most works. Most of the time. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right. That's that's a clever solution. But uh, let's see if you can get that clipping feature. That would be really nice. Now, uh, I had another. Okay. First, I want to share my favorite Okay, all -time thank you. favorite feature of music. Okay, so I've got a copy of music open on my iPad here. One of the biggest headaches of all the apps is that when I start writing notations, okay, um, so it's very easy. I'm going to just draw some nice fingerings, two, three, four, five, all different colors. This is great. I can do that. Highlights, whatever, okay. But then if, I, if I'm using an air turn, of course, to turn pages hands free, right, I would have to close the annotations and I would have to actually close this before I could turn the pages with my air turn, right? Check this out. Okay, so now I'm in music. I'm going to activate an annotation, start drawing, okay? I'm still in the annotation mode, but look, I can still turn pages while I'm writing. Look, I can keep writing. I don't have to close this. I can keep going right, 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 right. Turn pages with my air turn. Oh my goodness, you don't know how long I've been waiting for this. Ah, because it nothing, if you're working and it's so annoying to stop, turn the, and, and I, if I'm just, especially in rehearsal, when I'm quickly following somebody else and they're just playing and I just want to make a quick note and I'm still turning pages, hands free, still playing, I don't want to have that extra step of stop, open the tools, close the tools, every single page turn. You guys did it! Oh, I love this. Did you know that was my going to be my favorite feature? Getting the air turn no, and, and annotations I'm that go surprised. smoothly together? Yeah, but I'm surprised because this, we have it from the very beginning, this possibility. Wait, just to tell you why. Because we run so many uh, rehearsals with classical musicians yeah. in an orchestra, stressful configuration, that that was one of their first feedback. They don't have the time to right. come down right. and to turn right. pages. So yes, but I'm very happy it's, uh, you, you, you will be comfortable to use it. I'm happy. If, that, if there's one thing I want to get this, <laughs> that's the one thing that's, that's been driving me crazy. For years, you guys have just made my life very happy. <laughs> I'm happy. I'm happy as well. Oh my goodness. Now, I, I do have one more wish list thing. Um, I, I was reading with a, with a dear friend of mine. We are doing forehand, two piano, you know, forehand, one piano. Uh, works okay, and and with with forehand music, the way the paper music is usually published, you have the 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 secondo part, the person sitting on the left, and on one page, okay, and you open that that same page opening. The right side will be the primo part, okay, which is the person sitting on the right, and when you turn the page. The person's pay, who's always sitting on the left, their, their part will always be on one side. The other person's part will be on the other side. So I thought, wouldn't it be great if we could use an iPad? Well, the iPad is not large enough. One iPad is too small to see that page division. You know, I know news it can see two pages at the same time, right? So um, my friend has an iPad. I have an iPad. But, you know, I, but the problem is... Um, now, some of the apps can control page turns on multiple iPads, but that means I had to manually cut the, uh, the even pages for her and then make an odd only page for me. Is there a way that Newsic could, to, could do, like from one score, without me having to manually edit the music, to control two iPads? but turn just the odd number page, you know, just skip the page so that we both see a relative. Does that make sense? I hope I explained that well. 
No, completely. I, I completely got your point. Okay. Today, we can do half of your uh, request uh, wish list <laughs> okay. because we have uh, this master slave mode, meaning that you can uh, take control over the other screen and really control the page turn of your PDF file. Mm -hmm. So we have to add a setting uh, to um, to when when the person turn tap on the iPad, it will be uh, or the air turn. Another yeah, with or with the air turn, uh, it will uh, uh, flip just the odd or even pages for the other member. So we'll, it's a setting to do. So it's uh, I have to add it in the in the wish list. Okay. And uh, and okay. I will let you know when we can do that. But if you if you're saying it's the very first time I I I heard about this um, this uh, request, so um, I will investigate uh, and maybe you can ask your community if they feel the same. Uh, for the ones who are using iPad, but since we already have this bend mode, this master slave mode, I'm sure it's something we can do. Um, uh, Pretty it's easy, technically yeah. feasible. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. See, see, this is why it's so wonderful when developers and musicians talk together and they share ideas. Because, yes. uh, it, and that's you guys are doing that. That's so amazing. So, is uh, uh, before we close, because I, I, look, I, I'm I'm so excited you know uh, you guys have although there's still some more work to do and we'll probably do some more update videos i, I have a feeling we should do more of these um okay. but um now no, one more one more important distinction i want to make before we uh, go to my closing questions um music is a subscription-based app which i think is a brilliant idea from a business point of view okay so do you want to talk about that because other apps you buy them once and that's it right they, they when you but this is specifically, and it's not expensive, but but tell us a little bit about your decision to go with a, a subscription-based app, and, yeah, wh and why that. What's the value of that as opposed to well, I can just get this app, pay one time, and I don't have to keep paying every month or every year. Tell us why the subscription model makes sense for the musician. For two reasons. The first one uh, is that you really. By using music, you really use all of the storage that we're providing from the cloud. So it's uh, you can conceive music as being a, a cloud provider as well. So you can import, store, and what we said at the very, very beginning, that if you break the iPad, you can just find your music content from any other iPad. That's something that from, from the perspective of, of a user, they understand well this concept of just renting a cloud and putting all of the music files um, in the app. So that's one of the reasons. But the, the second that I prefer more, it's really because we don't plan to stop developing music. Every two weeks we release versions with new features and not just bug fixes. And uh, we want to keep this link between the developers and the musicians. And by committing to, um, to a subscription mode, you really feel bonded with the, with the app. And it's, just, it's not, I, okay, I bought it and that's finished. That's, it, right. Okay, it's here in, in my right. iPad. And um, what inspired us as well, it's like Adobe, they made a, a huge transition as well. Adobe uh, were, was before in you know, a one-time payment, one shot, right. and then they, they the, switched. The creative cloud, and, that's something I use all the time. So what's really interesting, you used to have to pay $600 to get one copy of Photoshop, you know, and they, they're very expensive programs. Adobe changed that model with the fit, and I I pay for that because it's for me that mm -hmm. those programs are vital yeah, for my creative. Fifty dollars a month, but I get everything. I get Photoshop, I get Illustrator, I get Premiere, I get Audition, all the things that I use to produce my videos and content marketing mm -hmm. for my work, for myself personally, and for me, that's a deal. Instead of saying spending you know four thousand dollars up front for all these programs, fifty bucks a month, and I always get the latest versions. I don't have to exactly. you know worry about whether or not I have, you know, the up-to-date ones, I was get, and again, I can use everything. I love, I actually love it. I, I love that. Yeah. yeah. So, so it was, it was a, source a source of inspiration. Of inspiration. And again, and our, our customer, customer service and not just the, the developers, they answer they like in less than 24 hours. hours we are extremely responsive. responsive. Every time we have a request, we answer it. And in comments on the app, so that, that's what one of our strengths to be, to have a very developed and strong oh. customer support. I, I took so, a, I took a screenshot of the uh the rate of the star rating on the apps right here let's take a look at this you guys are killing it <laughs> most app developers would die 
to have your star rating. That is amazing. And again, yeah. a testament to your level of customer support. That's congratulations. That's amazing. Thank you. Thank you very much. Yeah, yeah. We really care about uh, answering their questions because their questions are answers for us as well. Because sometimes we doubt uh, which button should we put this, what feature first, and they just it's um it's a it's a, it's a community. wonderful community. Yeah. 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 So I, I want to close off just asking you, did you're a musician first or a programmer first? I mean, how how you know, I always love asking, how did you start this business? And you talked a little bit about your inspiration collaborating as a band. Are you, a pro is that your training? Are you a programmer? I No, I'm not a programmer. Uh, I'm uh, I'm in the business side. So there is two, there are two worlds. Uh, we have a, a product manager that understands the language of programmers and the language of, of business person. I'm trying to... Uh, to, um, to, understand to understand better, better uh, the codes, codes but, but it's not my not training, training at all. Uh, I'm, I'm also a singer, singer amateur jazz, jazz singer, uh, and, and I perform and I use music to uh, uh, open my songs, songs and just, and just uh, sing. sing. And uh, yeah, and I and I personally use the app. So uh, that's my uh, background. And I've always been working in cultural institutions in France. I've been working in the Palace of Versailles for the concerts and uh, all of the operas. So that's my background. And uh, one of the founders is the CTO, so he is a pure tech uh, person. So we're very complementary in the in the founding team because we have musicians, CTOs, uh, technical guys, uh, business guys. So it's very uh, complete and and we, it's like a family. So um, how did you find so each other? How how did you how did you run across? Scouts. We were scouts. So, it's, so it's, uh, it, it shows that uh, it, it's, it's really, really something, something that, that we're, we're we are friends, friends and, and, and like family, family members, members and, and wow. we just decided to to, 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 move, to move to the professional, professional world for this uh, for this uh, adventure. So was yeah. it, was it financially was it very difficult? Did you have to raise a lot of money somehow to start the business, or how did so how did you how did you see the the, the company? We were, we were very lucky, lucky to have, have one of the founder, founder of the team, of the team is uh, invested. invested. It's seed funding, so really we, we got, got the funds from the founder, founder uh, which is really important because we didn't have this fear of working without knowing the months after, after we wouldn't have any fund to just survive. survive. And, that's and that's also a chance, chance for our users, users because and customers, customers we didn't um, rush anything. anything. We really yeah. we are we have this this chance. To follow, to follow the the, the pace, pace of our, our customers, customers and users, mm -hmm. because, because we have, have some uh, some, some resources, resources by the founder, founder. so it's mm -hmm. uh, really important. Mm -hmm. Fantastic. Fantastic. You know, I have a feeling we're going to have to do an update. Uh, I hope. You know, yeah, and uh, maybe some tutorials or something yeah. uh, in the future. Oh, <laughs> better yet, I I have a, I may be coming to Europe over the summer for vacation, and uh, so we're going to have to come hang out with you guys. <laughs> you can come <laughs> and, and visit the company and our employees and. Uh, that, great would be, that would be so much fun. You're in Paris. Well, of course, I've got a great reason to go to Paris now. <laughs> <laughs> hey, um, Aurelia, thank you so very, very much. And I'm Thanks. so excited for you. I, I'm not only for fulfilling many of my wishes, although there are a few more wishes that I have left for the app, but just working so hard to get through so many of them and continuing to develop just this amazing tool for musicians around the world, musicians in ensembles and groups. Congratulations to your team. I look forward to learning more about music and, and really diving in myself and, and putting it through its paces and coming with some more suggestions for you guys. <laughs> Thank you very much for the interview. And uh, yes, I hope that we can keep relations and we can share through your, with your community um, what we do and answer their questions. And really, we are here. We are people behind a computer and behind uh, the App Store. Thank you so much. Again, we really appreciate all that you do. And for A Musical Life, I'm Hugh Sung, and we'll see you next time.